everyone, welcome to episode number 87. 87? I think it's 78, but you know, who, who's keeping track of okay. mastering uh, modern selling? I'm here by myself as the only host, and so I'm all, I'm all messed up today. But um, no matter what, welcome to the show, Mastering Modern Selling. Sam, great to have you here with me. Um, I think Brandon will be joining us soon, but if not, you know, we're going to have a hell of a time without him. So can't wait. He's going to be, be so, fun. so upset. I missed out. He's going to just, it's going to be a big loss. So anyway, <laughs> let's just make this, you know, super jealous that he's not here. And Carson is in New York this week. So um, he's not here as well. So anyway, we'll get started. Um, Sam, again, welcome. Yes. Um, I know we're going to get into a lot of good stuff today, but before we start, you know, tell everybody a little bit about yourself, your background, what you do, and then we're going to start off with a Sam sales hack just to mm. get things rolling. But um, yeah, let's let's talk a little bit about your background first. Sure. Um, I'm Sam McKenna. I'm the CEO of Hashtag Sam Sales Consulting. I have been in enterprise sales my entire career, about 15, 16 years at this point. Uh, 16, 16 years. Holy moly. Um, see, I don't know my numbers either. We're, yeah, we're a good partnership here today. Um, but I was an AE, an individual contributor for about seven years, leader after that, executive leader after that, um, I ran North American sales for a company on the Bay Area and then moved over to LinkedIn, also in the Bay Area, um, where I led enterprise sales for LinkedIn Sales Navigator and then um, broke my 13th sales record while I was there uh, and started Sam Sales. So we're um, a LinkedIn consultancy, sales consultancy, sequence writing consultancy, all kinds of things under our belt. But the very cool thing about us is that we're an all-women team of 15, uh, over 200 clients, some really major brands, uh, and are about to celebrate our fifth year anniversary. So well, we're tired, some caffeine, yeah, but we're having a yeah. great time. Yeah. Um, and we're known for a bunch of things. Show me, you know me, urgency, and then a bunch of Sam's hacks, Sam sales hacks, which we can get into today. So do you mostly work with companies that are doing more B2B enterprise sales, or is there kind of a sweet spot that you're that you work with? Yeah, almost everything that we support is B2B. Um, so I think there's a, a handful that we help that are more on the consumer side. Uh, we do some professional services as well with some large accounting firms and um, law firms as well. But most everything is B2B tech uh, based um, and then some really nerdy stuff, data and things like that, too. Okay. So you're getting any AI companies? We do have some AI companies and we are learning our way all around that stuff. But um, but yeah, so so far, so good. It's a good education for us. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. We have a couple of AI uh, company, tech companies that are talking about adopting AI for uh, augmenting sales. Uh -huh. And it's kind of a nervous conversation. Like, what does that mean? And <laughs> are we going to be replaced? Or is there going to be 50 of us doing you know, the job of one or whatever? So, you know, I, I think the good thing about that is I'll, I'll say like every single time we get, you know, we get an email today um, from an from a automated uh, email that said um, they can help us grow our pediatric practice. And I was like, pediatrics, eh? I'm like, it's great research that you've done. It's right there in our title. It's exactly what we do, Sam Sales. So that every time we get one of those, we say, and they say that AI is going to steal our jobs. Um, I do think AI is going to be great. I think those who capitalize on the efficiency of it to learn and then mix that with their heart and soul and brains, hello, Brandon, um, uh, are going to be the ones that win, in my in my humble opinion today. So who is this guy? I, I'm is so that Brandon? sorry. Hi, Sam. I'm nice Hi, nice Brandon. How's it going? I'm good. I've been wanting to hear how's, how's the little one doing. Oh, thanks. You're so nice to ask. He's good. Alex is good. 12 weeks on Saturday. So we're oh, well. <laughs> just finding our new normal. Okay. So Brandon, we're, we're just getting started. Um, Sam was just telling us a little bit about her background, but we're going to kick things off with a Sam sales hack. Yes. Because um, we're adding Love value it. right out of the gate, right out of the gate. So. <laughs> well, I thank you guys. So one of the things we're known for is all of our, all of our hacks. And I will tell you, um, background wise, I've had, I've never had any formal sales training whatsoever. Um, it's everything that I've read. It's gut instinct. It's manners from the way that I've grown up. Um, but just thinking of the, we have a brand for thinking of the sh that nobody else thinks of, right? And that's kind of our brand. So little things that we can do. So let's talk about a couple of things. Um, one, we have something called the delayed thank you, and it works really beautifully. So the delayed thank you is this. Let's say I send Brandon a proposal, and he's like, tomorrow I'm going to get you an answer to this proposal. And I'm like, great. What do most reps do? They respond right away, very excited, eager, and they say, thanks, Brandon. And you're like, you're welcome. And then tomorrow rolls around, Brandon doesn't get back to us. So what do we do? Then we just follow up. Instead, just delay the thank you. It's painful. It's the one place where we are not urgent, 
but delay the thank you. Keep the email and red in your box. Tomorrow, close business when Brandon inevitably forgets to get back to us, even though he promised he would. You just say, thanks so much. And Brandon's like, oh, that's right. And you're like, yes. And you get an answer. So small little thing you can do. And I'm going to give you just one more. For all of the times that we send emails or we get positive responses, somebody says, yes, I'd love to book time with you. Send me some times that work. And then we respond. We say, here's my calendar link. Also, don't do that. But here's my calendar link or here's some times that work for me. Right. We send that over. And then Brandon never responds. And then we're like, Hey, Brandon, do these new times work? Do you still want to meet? We're just following up. We're just following up. We pay in the butt. Instead, do that once or twice. Do the times, send a follow up. And then, if nothing, as long as you've received a positive response to wanting to book time with you, book time with that person for two weeks from today at that same time. Brandon, I know that you're super busy. Scheduling sometimes is half the battle. I'm going to go ahead and send an invite on our calendars for two weeks from today. Should that not work, just let me know and I'll reschedule. Otherwise, look forward to chatting with you then. 99% of the time, the person says, thanks so much, that works perfectly, bye. And then you have a meeting. For any SDRs on the phone, oh my gosh, will this help you hit your meetings, booking goals, instead of just chasing and chasing, and then probably forgetting about half the leads you were chasing. <laughs> I, love, wow. I love the hack, but I'm a little worried about this branding guy. He sounds like a flake. He sounds like a total, <laughs> total flake. Can you believe that guy? What are you, it ghosting him already? Yeah, <laughs> okay. he goes you. He shows up to you know live shows late. Late, oh, God. it's great. Good, good, good impressions. So, <laughs> Sam, I wanted to go back to the first hack a little bit. So, so you send Brandon the proposal. Mm -hmm. Is it what you're saying? You're delaying a thank you or a follow up for a couple of days, or what is a delay again? Think it's a delayed thank you. So think of every single time you send something or somebody asks a question, they say, hey, I'm meeting with my boss tomorrow. We want to review your proposal. We're going to do this. Uh, can you just, can you give me this tomorrow, right now? Give me whatever it is that got I need. It. Oh, and then okay, I'll get got it, got it, got back it. to you tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So we send the thing, right? Or Brandon says, thanks for this. I'm going to get back to you tomorrow. We say, we immediately say, thank you. We burn the thank you. Just hang on to it for a day. Mm -hmm. If Brandon said he's going to get back to you tomorrow, don't say thank you just yet. It's the one time where I say, my, Delay your manners, delay the urgency and delay your manners a little bit and just say thank you tomorrow. It's also kind of the, the hack that we use of like when somebody said they were going to get back to us and they haven't yet and we don't want to just follow up, send a text message about something else or send an email to nurture them about something completely unrelated. Hey, I know you live in Denver. I saw this really cool article and passing it along. Most expensive house ever sold, just sold. Did you see this? So cool. And then Brandon's like, oh my God, I didn't. Also, I owe you an answer. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so just little things you can do to not be that same salesy salesman that everybody is. It sounds like you're promoting just being a, a, a good human being and be conversational with people. Imagine putting, that. Putting some manners at the forefront of our sales process. Who thought that that could help you get ahead? You know, what's interesting too about the <laughs> second one, just the second one too about the calendar piece, right? If they decline it, yeah. then you kind of know that maybe this isn't wasn't qualified to begin with because even right. if they're even if they're not available they'll probably come back with an alternative reschedule right so exactly right yeah right so at least you end up getting the dialogue going versus just hanging there and nothing nothing occurring totally right really good awesome yeah, so, was it getting getting a no sooner is is better than getting a no answer and and just going on and on and on and chasing yeah. And we don't want to hang out in limbo. And I will say like for, for a lot of SDRs out there, a lot of us that are chasing meetings and booking things between all these mediums, texts and Slack and LinkedIn DMs and all that stuff, it's easy for things to fall out of our purview, right? So the faster we can book them, get it scheduled, check it off our list, the better. So send the times, send one more follow-up. And then if nothing, again, only if you've received a positive response. So it is never appropriate to put some time on someone's calendar before they've said yes. It happens sometimes. It's now a marketing thing that happens a lot. I'm like, the hell is this webinar that I signed up for? That's how I showed up today. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so did Brandon. Brandon, so Brandon, 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 Brandon also doesn't know why he's here. Um, no, but I think think about these things. Just little, small little moves, right? Can really build a brand for you differently. Can make you a better modern seller. Can make you different than, again, what everybody is experiencing. And I think if we think about sales, the bar is really low. Right. What we expect of sales and the reputation, unfortunately, we have despite being such a fabulous profession, it's pretty low. So it doesn't take much. Right. In terms of the way that we change our tactics to stand out and build a better presence for ourselves. Tom, you know what I like about this is that um, and I know we're not even 10 minutes into it. And I think we could stop right there and tell everybody just take you got two hacks and and a um, 
encouragement and motivation on just how to behave, like how to have the mindset around what you're doing. And, and Sam, I think you're right. You would you would stand out from the vast majority of sellers that are out there because, unfortunately, the bar is so low. Yeah, you got it. Well, and I think the bar is low mainly because and this is what I'm not because we're not good sellers and we're not good people. We just haven't had the right techniques taught to us so that we're the most effective. Right. Yeah. And then we end up becoming ineffective and we become as part of becoming ineffective, we become annoying. Right. And I think if you can somehow, which is what I think your hack is what it's effective, but it's also to me, that wasn't annoying. Right. If you sent me that and I did the calendar and I, if I really wasn't answer, I just decline it and say, you know, that's the end of it. So it seems like it's effective and yet building that, you know, brand and that relationship at the same time. Totally. I think um, Josh Brown and I talk about this a lot. Uh, if you don't know him, he's a great follow, really, really good sales tactics. But we say that most people just haven't had a good example of what good looks like, right? Mm -hmm. So whether it's a sales email, whether it's a conversation, whether it's active listening, discovery call, we talk about that quite a bit. And I think that's it. I think we often also think that we have to be these scripted, robotic, different people when we are selling. And we don't, you know? I think one of the fascinating things, like something I hear, um, I heard a few times early in my career was my enthusiasm, my smiliness, and my friendliness made me come across as junior and untrustworthy. And I was like, well, guys, that's who I am. So I'm yeah. really screwed if I have to be somebody different. But I think you can be personable. You can be friendly. You can be honest and transparent in sales and get ahead, right? Mm -hmm. All of these things that you typically hear in the sales profession is the complete opposite of what I've done. Right. I've never made a cold call, a single cold call in my life. I've been broken 13 records, made millions and millions of dollars. Being a CEO that's really successful today, not a shot in hell would I ever pick up the phone and make a cold call. And I'm sorry if I've just not made a few enemies out of anybody listening, but I don't do that stuff. And then we also don't think about the salesy language, right? You'd never hear us say, do you have 15 to 20 minutes to catch up and let us hear about your business? We'd never do that. Also, why do we ask for 15 or 20 minutes and we book 30? What the hell is that about? So. Just think, do you have a couple, do you have some time over the next week or two? I'd love to chat, I would love to chat about your needs and how we can support you. Just use human language. And I think too, we talk a lot about the scripts that we use and things that we say, and I say, say them out loud. Would you ever say that at a conference? If you swung by someone's booth or they did yours, would you say that out loud? And people are like, no. And I'm like, well, why the hell do you write that in an email? Mm -hmm. um, just be a human being and by, virtue of that, right? Um, and making an effort and caring about other people, I think you'll get ahead. So let's let's talk a little bit about your philosophy. And certainly you've been around LinkedIn for a while. Um, <laughs> and, you know, we talk a lot on this. So this show, by the way, its previous generation was uh, social selling for newbies. And then we went to social mm -hmm. selling 2.0. So we were very, this, this the, the, the genesis of the show has been very social selling. And we decided to change it to modern selling because it's just social it is. selling is modern right. selling. Right. Yeah. It is just modern selling. So tell us a little bit about, you know, how you use LinkedIn, your strategy, and even, you know, we haven't talked a lot, Brandon, about sales navigator really. And, and mm -hmm. do you have any hacks or things mm -hmm. with that, that, that you would like to bring to the table? Mm -hmm. we, we, br we bring Alexander Lowe on every six months or so to talk about Navigator, but we haven't done that yeah. for a while. Yeah, we got to get Alex back. Yeah. He's a yeah. good expert. He was just texting me because he was in DC, but it was too late notice um, for me to see him. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, but he's great. I got to meet him in London um, a couple of years ago. I, I think power of LinkedIn. You want to get hired by LinkedIn? Use LinkedIn. That's exactly how I got hired by LinkedIn. So I, I think a couple of things, right? Like I've been posting on the platform since 2011. Like you can pull a report of every single post you have. If you ever just want to see what the embarrassing things that you used to write, it's all right there for you. Um, but I've been posting on that platform since then. I hate to use this word, but I've been an influencer on the platform since about 2016. Um, and then early adopter of Navigator, really a massive champion of it, which is how I got ultimately seen and then hired uh, by LinkedIn. So I think to me, the way you use it is a couple of ways. One, you absolutely use it to become a thought leader. So if you, and I would tell you, no matter what stage of your career you're at, you have something useful to share with people. I would encourage you stay in your lane. If you are a BDR, don't be posting about what CROs should be doing. Stay in your lane, right? But talk about what makes you successful as a BDR. If you are a CEO, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a CRO, talk about that, right? People want to know the things that you do to be successful. So you can start there and build a brand for yourself. 
Then two, it's a great exposure for your company. So one of the things that I did when I was both an AE and a leader working for a company on the Bay Area called On24 is I'd post. I'd post about webinars, I'd post about marketing hacks, I'd, I'd post about things that we were doing and teaching our clients. What did that do? It brought inbound leads for every single team in our company, except for mine. Yay, except, <laughs> well, it wasn't direct revenue for me. Here's what I did to stand out. I tracked that. So if those inbound leads came in, I would, I would funnel them to the right person. I would track and see their success. And then that would be part of my review. My presence on LinkedIn has built X amount of pipeline, brought in X amount of leads and X amount of closed deals. Welcome, I would like a raise. So think about things like that that you can do. Now, on top of that, how do we get in front of our customers, right? Everybody says my buyer's on a LinkedIn. I say, you need to look at the data because they absolutely are. Also, if you don't think they are, they are. But that means your competitors also don't think they are. You have a strategic advantage to get in front of them. Get your executives on a platform, hire us, we'll write their content, manage their profiles for you. But do that if you are not, if you're not, if your executives aren't doing it, you can do it. The other thing to think about is look for their content. This is where Navigator can come into play, right? So start to vet out who are executives or the people that I'm tracking and my territories. Make lists in Navigator and then start to manage who is actually posting. To me, this is one of the best hacks we have and it's something we call expand the sandbox. We have a playbook you can buy on our website, but I'll give you most of the intel for free. You don't have to spend a dime with us. Said every perfectly. Oh. A smart entrepreneur. Um, here's what we do. So one of the things we did was there was a CRO at a six billion dollar company that I really wanted to be able to. Um, we wanted to. We wanted her business, and so she posts on LinkedIn. So here's what I did. Are you ready for it? 13 minutes to prospecting got us a nearly hundred thousand dollar deal. Commented on her post twice. Sent her a direct connection request. I said I love your content. I keep coming across it because I'm stalking you because you're in my LinkedIn navigator mm -hmm. list. Would love to connect, commented two more times, and then sent her a note and said, hey, I think we can probably help you with your LinkedIn content and make you a little bit better, said in a more tactful way. You want to chat? That's it. And we got that. You can do that. So what we call expand the sandbox. You're literally spear phishing for your prospects and you're doing something, making an effort, right, that no one else is making. So go and do it and be different. We just did it again with another company based in Israel, CRO. Um, I think they're... Uh, just over 100 million in ARR. Easy peasy. Okay, I'll stop. Hey, Sam, I have a question for you on that. So, you address one of the big questions. Um, our customers aren't on LinkedIn, which we know they are, but okay. Um, so, first part of that question is other than saying they are, how do you how do you answer that question with people to help help them see that their customers are on LinkedIn you or Navigator? The data of access um, member access from LinkedIn shows that half of the members, there's over a billion members on LinkedIn, right? And that skyrocketed obviously during COVID, but half of the billion members come in at least once a week for a minimum of five minutes. Harvard Business Review also show the executive titles, that's anything that's director plus uh, come into the platform for around an average of 42 minutes on the weekends. You have to think of how to strategically use that. So the number one thing that we can see, and you can see this from an earning, the Microsoft earnings report, is that the LinkedIn marketing, um, LinkedIn marketing services line of business revenue, while it's still their most successful, is declining. Why? Because people continue to funnel ads on LinkedIn and it doesn't work. And so they stop spending their money there, right? The reason the ads aren't working is because the members are coming. They're arriving to the platform, but they're here to network and they're here to learn. They mm -hmm. want to learn your thought leadership from someone. They don't want to be sold to. They want to network and they want to learn. So you've got that going for you. I think the other thing to think about is if they're coming and we know that the executives are coming on the weekends, how can you be smart about the way that you uh, categorize your content? You'll see the weekend content for me probably gets less engagement because it's for a narrower, higher level audience. And that's totally okay. That's who I'm targeting. So think maybe your Friday posts are a little bit lighter and then your Saturdays are really boring about sales strategy or LinkedIn strategy or something like that. But we know our buyers are coming. And again, if your competitors think the same thing incorrectly that you do, that your buyers are on LinkedIn, you've got one hell of a strategic opportunity to get your voice out, to get it read and in a very uncrowded market. One more thing on that, just over 1% of the members, myself included, post at least weekly on LinkedIn. And even the people that are posting weekly, we know what it is. It's auto share stuff from their marketing team that talks about some new mechanical piece of software or whatever that they just delivered, riveting stuff. 
So if you're showing up with a different voice and teaching them something, you're going to go in a different way. I have a follow-up question. That was excellent, Sam. I really appreciate that. Uh, so somebody says our customers don't show, they're not on LinkedIn. We've already addressed that. But you said your system with this $16 billion, uh, I think you said CEO. Six, six, yeah. Mm -hmm. six, CRO. Okay. CRO. <laughs> <All good. laughs> yeah, same thing. Like see, see somebody, lots of money. Um, you commented a couple of times, sent a connection request, commented a few more times. What did you comment on and how do you go about doing that? Because I know a lot of people say if they do publish, it's content that's really hard to comment on because it's about their company or it's about something, one of their products or something. How do you coach people through that process? So I think you're trying to do two things and then I'll, I'll tell you what to comment. But when you comment, you are trying to build brand visibility with who you are and you're simply making an effort that other people aren't. Let me just give you one quick thing to look up. For anybody that's listening right now, go and look at one or two of the executives that you want to get in front of, maybe that are posting that company content, but go and look at their, their last post. Here's what you're going to find. 90% of the time, you're going to get a ton of likes and very few comments. What's fascinating to me is it's like you've literally got an executive sitting on the trade show floor. You have 179 people around that executive going right and harding what they're saying. And then you have three people that have made comments. And who are those people? They're their employees that are trying to kiss their butts. Okay, so you have an opportunity to stand out. Consider that first and foremost. Even if it's something on company content, right? Not every post is gonna be able, you're not gonna be able to say something on every post and you don't want to, you don't wanna be annoying. You wanna make it look organic, even if it's totally systematic and process driven. But think of all the things you can say. So maybe somebody posts about um, Women in Sales Month, women, you know, Women's Leadership Month, something about DEI, something about an offsite, something about a conference or sponsoring, whatever. Think of something that you can say, right? Say, fully support this, love to see this. Tag somebody else that you know that's really important so they can see kind of the arena that you play in. Add a comment that's thoughtful. You are going to find that a lot of executives, so the one that I was talking about, posts about totally um, human interest pieces. So it was about their family, about their belief in, you know, for leadership and things like that. I can comment on that all day long, right? You look at one of the heads of social media um, at uh, Nike, her name is Sammy, S-A-M-I. She posts about being a mom all day long. Her content gets unbelievable engagement. Now she's gonna be a harder one to cut through the noise through because everybody comments on her stuff because she's really present. But just take a look at that stuff, right? And add your organic thought leadership, add something. What would you say to that person if they said those words to you at a conference? Okay, like, hey, we're sponsoring a webinar. And you'd be like, oh God. But think of something that you could say back to them and then stand out. Last thing, please, for the love of God, do not say cool article man or something like that, right? Show us you have a brain and what's in there. And that will go a long way. Yeah, I want to go back. I want to go back to the 42 minutes that you mentioned earlier. So Brandon, did you know that? Did you have that, that data? You know, the, it, the, I knew about that. I mean, the data, it, it's been shifting a little bit, but I did know the they log in at least once a week. Yeah. Um, but 42 minutes on the weekend, uh, I think that was new to me actually. So can you just repeat, um, Sam, what the 42 minutes and what that is? And then I have a follow up question just because I think that's super, super relevant to understand. Yeah. And then I've got a follow up hack for you after your follow up question to this day. OK, point. 42 minutes. Yep. Um, director plus titles are spending an average of 42 minutes on LinkedIn on the weekends. That was from Harvard Business Review just a couple weeks ago. And I assume that they're not necessarily posting. They're not commenting. They're just kind of seeing what's going on and learning and absorbing. And that can be done more realistically on the weekend when they're not distracted and on the, and the other places. And it's kind of a way to get caught up or get safe current maybe is a, is a better way to look at it. Exactly right. And I think if you think, just think for a minute, right? Like how many um, connection requests, how many DMs probably exist in those executives boxes, right? Like one of the things that we do at Sam Sales, I briefly mentioned, but we write content for executives and then we manage their entire presence for them, some celebrities as well on LinkedIn. So we know what their inboxes look like, right? We're, we're looking at one today for a VP of global sales who has 619 connection requests that are just stacked up over time. It's a hot mess. So think about the weekend as a strategic use of time for how you're going to cut through the noise. And this is my backup hack. 
before I get there, let me tell you, if you are using cold email outreach, right? Hopefully you subscribe to what we call show me or no me. It's our trademark term. You're taking time to do your research and reach out. But what most people don't do is they don't email on the weekends. And here's what we encourage you to do. Today's Wednesday. On Thursday and Friday, send your first email to an executive. Your second email, your follow-up email, is going to have so much more validity or, or um, uh, higher propensity for a response rate if you send it less than 48 hours later, which means you're sending it when? Saturday or Sunday. Saturday morning and Sunday nights, we have executives that are working. Who else is emailing them during that time? Not a whole lot of anyone. Who else is slacking them? Nobody. And you have executives that are more likely to respond because they want to procrastinate from the work that they have to do. So you're going to probably <laughs> potentially get a response. Think of LinkedIn the exact same way. So our hack around this is something called bubble hunting. You guys are on LinkedIn. Take a quick look at your DMs. So anything that's in your inbox, you're going to have these little bubbles next to people's pictures. If you have a filled in green bubble, that means that they're active and they're active on a desktop or a laptop device, not mobile. Take an hour of your time on the weekend and go bubble hunting. Go and look for the executives that you've either exchanged messages with, you've nurtured over LinkedIn, and send them something of value over the weekends. Guess how we got one of our deals done at LinkedIn? By bubble hunting one of the executives on LinkedIn. Don't tell her that. Um, but I mean, this is, it's easy stuff. It's, it's, I hate the work hard and not work smart, not hard. Do both. But this is an easy way to do exactly that. It's just a better use of your time strategically. Brandon, I don't know. We've never done anything on the weekend where we tried to procrastinate what we were really supposed to do and then went off and did something else, did we? Absolutely. Me I, yeah. just to... Never. I, I, I did sand two pieces of furniture this weekend on Saturday. Um, sure. I will not admit that I was procrastinating the work that I should have been doing, but uh, my wife was really happy that I got it done, though. <laughs> happy wife, happy life, as they say. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Sam, this is, this is, this is great stuff. And I, I love the bubble hunting. I, I've, I learned the term from you all, but that concept of looking for people who are active and sending them messages when they're online, it is, it was, I, and I love the word, the hack. It's a simple hack. It's a simple change of the lens and just getting people to look at LinkedIn a little bit differently. What are, what's, what's another, while you're here, we're just going to keep going. Get, feed us more. What, what, what are some more of the, the little hacks like that, that, that uh, are dangers? Yeah, I think, um, uh, let's think of the, we, we talked about the send the, send the email um, and then the two days later, think, think about what your subject line does look like, right? So the, the biggest piece of feedback we hear from reps today are, I know how to sell my product. I'm really good at that. I don't know how to sell in this modern day and age. So I'm really struggling with figuring out how do I cut through the noise? And one of the biggest things we hear is how do I cut through the noise of an email box? We're the queens of show me or no me. I can say we're the queens because we're an all women team of 15, but we are the queens of show me or no me, of making an effort. So think about this. Look at the last emails you've sent out, right? Brandon, Tom, you guys could pull up your inboxes as well, and I'm sure they are hot messes of subject lines. Quick question, um, you know, chief of IT, you know, whatever technology, just the worst things ever. And what I would encourage you to do is think about how you can do a little research, right? And you can strategically send a message to people. So I would go in and look at that executive's profile. If they have a tumbleweed flowing by their profile and there's literally nothing for you to pull from there, go to the company website, Google their name, see if they've been on a podcast or, an, or a live stream or written an article recently, find something you can talk about with them. And when you pull that information, that's what your subject line looks like. So let me give you an example. When I reached out to Ryan, the CEO of LinkedIn, I sent him a message a couple months ago, and I can't remember what the first part of my subject line was, but the second part of my subject line was um, called, it said small pivots. So let's say I referenced a mutual connection, then I did plus in quotes, small pivots, plus hashtag Sam sales. Now he knows me, but still let's pretend he doesn't know Sam sales. He sees a mutual connection, I know that person, and he sees the word small pivots. Where did that come from? If you were trying to sell to LinkedIn, there is an article in Financial Times in the Financial Times where Ryan basically gives you exactly how he buys as a CEO. It's literally a roadmap of how to sell to him. And one of the things he says is that he talks about making small pivots before he places big bets. So I wrote that in it and I put it in quotes in the subject line, got it open. And I said, here's how a gamble with Sam Sales, a small pivot with Sam Sales can make a massive impact to you. And then you can place a big bet on us. 
if I talk about what I can do and I give something tangible there as well, right? There has to be meat in the email for him to say, my really, really precious time is worth spending with you because I think you drive value. I can't just say, I can drive value for you. I have to make the effort and no one makes the effort. Again, us as the Queens of Show Me or Know Me, when I look at my inbox, it's garbage. It really is. And you would think the people that want to sell to us, we don't have LinkedIn budget. We have a little budget, four bucks. We have some budget that we can spend. So make an effort. And the best part is even if I don't have, you know, budget for you or I don't have a need for you, I probably know someone who does. So if you just made the effort, how far ahead you could get. Yeah, Sam, what I really appreciate about that is that you gave a very tangible way for people to go find the research or do the research and find the nugget. Yeah. So often I hear people, they go, well, LinkedIn, how much time is it going to take? It's like, well, um, how much money would you like to make? Exactly right. And I, I think you think about that for your own prospecting, right? A lot of people might hear this feedback and be like, yeah, I don't prospect, right? I work for Salesforce. We have tons of inbound leads. I have a BDR. I don't have to do that. My pushback to you would be, why would you ever want to leave the fate of how much money you can make in somebody else's hands? Go get after it, right? And the other thing to think about is thinking about how you can pull this information, even if there's nothing on, on LinkedIn, even takes you a little time, block out 30 minutes. I would encourage you block out 300 minutes in a week to find 10 people that are like C-suite, like you would lose sleep the night before, like it's Christmas morning, right? Of what your meeting is going to be like the next day and find, find those people and make the effort. The other thing is, I would tell you, you're probably wrong on a lot of your buyers, right? There is information. Take a look at somebody named, poor, poor guy, take a look at um, somebody named Josh Atkins. Josh is a GM of a division of a team at um, Qualtrics. Um, 2,000 or so sellers, quite a few bucks in revenue. And if you look at his profile and you look at the bottom of his about section, he says, if you're a BDR trying to get on my calendar, here's everything you can talk about to get me to respond. Guess how many people look at that? It's, I mean, like, it's like the, it's like mm -hmm. the cheat code is right there and you don't make the effort. So I be believe me, your executives are clamoring for you to do that. And if you do, let's say that they don't need you, they'll probably respond and say, great effort, good job. Good job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you open the door, connect with them on LinkedIn, keep the conversation rolling, follow up with them another time. Sam, I, I love that example. I did that over a year ago on the very bottom of my about section. I love it. And I'm not going to tell anybody what it was, but I say, if you, if you mention these three things, you will get my attention. And I think I've had two people do it in the past year. I mean, isn't that wild? It's, I mean, it's simple. Like you, how much time it's going to take. Okay. If you could spend 10 or 15 minutes and you had three key pieces of information that none of your competitors knew about a prospect and you could reference it in a LinkedIn message, a comment, an email, a voicemail, in skywriting, whatever, would you spend the time doing it? Yeah. I, I, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just, I was going to say the, my, my former boss at LinkedIn, who now manages a billion dollar business at LinkedIn posted a while ago. And she said that in three years, she's received four, four personalized sales emails. Every single one of them got a response. How, how much would you pay? How much would your marketing team pay? What's the cost per lead they would pay for a meeting with somebody like that? What would you give as a sales rep to get a meeting with someone like that? But, but Sam, we get, we've got to automate everything and, and, and make sure that everything, we got more, more, more coming out. Forget this quality garbage. We, we were talking about AI in the beginning. It's all going to go to AI anyway. So keep, yeah. keep doing that, you guys, because then it's easier for me yeah. to stand out. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hey, Sam, I have, a, I have a question for you. Yeah. What has been the best sales message that has come into you that's gotten your attention? Because um, you're, 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 you're tough. But you're fair, I'm sure, because you because of what you do. But what what was something that got your attention? I think there was a it wasn't us. Uh, it wasn't me. But I will say it was Kim on our um, she's our head of strategy and enablement. And she and her profile talks about the things she loves. And so somebody sent her a puppy picture um, and said, you know, I can't remember what the subject line was, but just just literally said I did my research. 
here's the puppy picture. It says on your profile to send puppy pictures or that you you will cave for those. So here's one of my dog. Um, if you don't have a dog, go and find a puppy picture online. They're easy to find, I presume. Um, and then send it along. Um, but I think to me, like what really works? One, making the effort really, really works. But two, if you think about the rest of your message, here's some things to think about. I bet, I bet $100, the majority of people listening to us right now, if they look at their emails, it says what they do. It doesn't say the challenge that they solve or the outcome that that buyer will get from working with them. Why are you different? Why should somebody give you the time of day? So if you say, oh, we're a pipeline acceleration platform, we can do, 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 do. who cares? I would say, look at what you do and just say, so what? Oh, so what? Right? Or if somebody says, we already have that. And you say, but, oh, wait, we're different. Say it in the email. So you have to think about the challenge you solve, and then you have to assume the objection that someone's going to say, right? We already have that, we don't need it, we're not prioritizing, et cetera. Let's pretend they responded to you with that, right? And if they did, what would you say? You say, but, 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 make sure that that's in the first email, because you're not going to get a response from executives if you don't take the time to do it. And that's what misses. That's why we scale and scale and scale, because it takes so much volume to get a response, because our messaging is so bad. So put in the effort for show me, you know me, rewrite those scripts. And, you know, if you need help, there's tons on our, on our website that can give you all the help you need. So you know, what are your thoughts? Oh, go ahead, Tom. No, I, I just wanted to, you know, the making the effort, right? What I'm hearing you say is, and I think this is probably true. If you really make the effort, right? Not some half-ass BS effort, but really make the effort. You're going to get probably three possible outcomes. You're either going to get a response from the person you're sending it to, a positive one. It's probably reasonable if they're not the right person, they may forward it to somebody else in the company who is the right person with an endorsement. Or you may get a referral for somebody completely out. I mean, your odds of actually accomplishing something with that are, I don't know, I would think literally 100 times higher than you're ever going to get with the typical BS email that we all get in our inbox. Am I looking at, I mean, making the effort seems like it, is it's a win 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 when we so we help organizations learn how to write not only do show me you know me but how to write their emails and when we teach them show me you know me alone they get an average of a 43 percent open rate 43 percent industry average is six percent so if you spend 300 minutes right doing making the effort and sending 10 emails to c-suite executives that you would just fall all over yourself to get a meeting with if four of them four of them even opened the email, what would that mean, right? And then we get an average response rate of 20%. So two of them respond, 300 minutes for two responses, right? And then you're going to scale down the time it's gonna take, five, six minutes max, right? That you should really be spending on that. Carve that time out, block it. Take a Monday off and do this all on Sunday when you can be strategic and smart and not interrupted. I think the other thing to consider, again, is even when you get that response, if they don't have a need for you, it opens the door to building a relationship with that person. And if you care about your, your brand whatsoever, it builds a positive brand. I can tell you several people who have purchased from me at every single company I've worked with, worked at. Robin Addis is one of those people. Every single company I've worked with, she's bought something from me because I built a good brand. I haven't been overly salesy. I prioritized her, her needs as a buyer, right? Those are the things you have to do. So when people say, how the hell did Sam Sales, a services company, grow to over 200 clients with really no salespeople, right? In less than five years, I think we actually did it in less than four years. I say, it's because I spent the time really building all of that that process beforehand, building that brand beforehand. So think about how that can pay off for you in spades, not even today, but 10 years from now. And, and you, when you say building the brand, you are really saying that you were just a human being and you genuinely cared to connect with people and took the time and research to do it. I think the difference with me is that one, I, I want to make sure that the way I stand out, like, when I think of sales, and probably a lot of a lot of you guys listening, when I think of sales, I thought of sales. I went, Ugh, right? I'm like, God, like I would never do that profession. I begrudgingly took my first sales job, but I think as soon as I changed the lens on the fact that this is showing up to solve, not to sell, things really changed for me. So one, I wanted to make sure that the brand I built when I reached out, that people didn't see me as that like 
you know, just hustler, that Al Bundy shoe salesman, if you will. Does anybody remember that for the three of us? Okay. Yes. I didn't want them to see me that way. So I wanted to make sure to do things differently, right? And to prioritize manners and thoughtfulness and just giving a shit about people. And then when I think about the calls, it's not, I'm not here to sell you something. You have a challenge. You assume from what I wrote that I can solve it. You agreed to 30 minutes with me. It's my job and my point of view to make good use of that time for you. And so if I show up asking questions, trying to understand your challenges, trying to understand why, trying to challenge your thinking, actively listening, digging in, I'm probably going to get to something of, we can help you and here's how, let's book a second call and I'll really go into it and bring your whole decision making circle with you. And that's really what I'm doing. It's being human, but it's not using any of these tactics. It's not, tell me about your buying process and who is the actual decision maker? None of that. Let's have a conversation, get you to open up and trust me, and then we'll go from there. And oddly, it's been successful. Sam, I know you have a hard stop here coming up. I've got two, two quick things. Um, number one is a question, and I'm going to come back to it in a second, But because number two is... Um, you and I have commented a few times back and forth, but we've never had a conversation. And you were out on maternity leave. We didn't do a pre-call beforehand. Um, thank you so much for being here. And I'm going to tell you, um, I expected a lot from you <laughs> because of what I've seen and what I read and, and I know about you. And you way surpassed it. Thank you so much. Thank goodness. I, I really appreciate it. I think this is very tactical. And I know our audience loves tactical. I'm a little... Uh, wondering why the comments are low today, but I think it's, um, we didn't get restreamed out everywhere this week, but that's okay. Um, the question I had, um, when you're, when you're working on the show me, you know me, how often, and what do you recommend for people to go into Instagram or go into TikTok or go to other places to do a little bit of that research? I think um, I would say the only time you can go on TikTok or Instagram is if they are TikTok or Instagram influencers in their own right, right? I think otherwise, just stick to the professional stuff. Anything that is shared on LinkedIn is fair game. So one question we get back sometimes is somebody says like, you know, um, pending to be a new dad or something like that. And so I might say, well, I was pending to be a new mom. Can I can I talk about that? Is that weird? I don't know this person. It's on their professional profile. They have shared it professionally with a professional audience. Have at it. Anything that's on there, use. Otherwise, I would stay away from any of the social media, unless, I mean, unless from a corporate perspective, they have that. Like we have a TikTok page. It's riveting. It's much more blonde those days. Um, but we have a TikTok page. Can I even say that? Is that the right thing to say? TikTok page? Anyway, um, we have the TikTok. Um, so go and check that out. But you can use that stuff. Uh, otherwise, I would say keep it professional, look at the company site, find articles or podcasts that they're in, use something that has more professional context or isn't shared in a professional setting. I appreciate that. Yeah. And we did have a couple. We have an endorsement here from Brian. He loves it. So thank you. And, <laughs> thank and you, Sarah also thought it was very powerful and great perspective. I, there are so. people out there probably taking notes so fast they don't have time to comment. I hope That's your right. pens are on fire. Please That's come right. say hello That's on LinkedIn right. if we're not yeah. already connected. Yeah. So before we wrap up, yeah, where should people find you, Sam? And, yeah. and tell us, you know, for your company and your obviously your LinkedIn page. You bet. Samsale.com. Um, you can send for our newsletter there. It comes out every Friday. We're pretty funny, um, uh, but also really tactical and actionable every month, every week. Uh, we have tons of subscriptions. They're um, relatively low price. Actually, I think. Our code March still works for 20% off until the end of today. It's a very good timing if you want to grab anything there, but I think you'll you'll kill it with the information we have on there. And then we also have a women's group, um, totally free of charge, monthly webinars. Um, come and sign up for that all on our website. And then of course, LinkedIn, hopefully I will be the first Samantha McKenna to pop up. And if not, I'll take her down. Just kidding. Okay, awesome. <laughs> I love it. Well, Sam, um, I know you gotta go. I have, uh, a daughter who is finishing up her junior year of college. Oh. She's in the business department with an emphasis in professional sales. And so hopefully she's going to listen to me and start engaging with you and following you. I even, I will take her. her reach out to reach out to Kim about the internships. I think she's still a little shy on LinkedIn right now, but I'm oh working my gosh. on it. Yeah. Break, break her, break her open. Tell her to come and hang out with us. We'd love to, we'd love to meet her. I will encourage her more. <laughs> Thanks, right. you guys. Thank you for having yeah, me. Thank you so much. You were awesome. Thanks. Yeah, we'll have you back again. We really appreciate Sounds it. Sounds good. All right. <laughs> My pleasure. Bye. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye, Sam.
So Brandon, well, Tom, I'm still on the I'm still on the live stream here because I, I figure there's some after conversation that we should be having here. With, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, and plus we didn't have Carson here to say happy no, modern selling, no, and so no, we didn't no. we didn't know how to we end, didn't know what but, to do. So we'll just yeah, sit here no, and chat you know, for a little bit longer. You know what I loved about that, and I knew we were going to get that with Sam, is that um, the feedback that we get constantly is the tactical and the practical, and she was very tactical and very practical. Um, you know, the bubble hunting. I love that term. I've, I've honestly, I've never heard that term. We talked about, you know, you can always see who's online, like a full green means they're online. And that's a great time to message them because you know that they're attentive right then. But bubble bubble hunting makes it so much easier to remember. Yeah. And I think also the, you know, we, we have a lot about mindset where we talk a lot about mindset of modern mm-hmm. selling. I don't know that we've ever clearly stated making the effort. Or, or putting that as a key mindset thing yeah. is really, really making the effort. And I think maybe, you know, in listening to her, I think that a lot of times even that making the effort is underestimated, right? We might make a little bit of effort, but we don't really make enough effort that it really impinges and moves the needle when somebody actually, you know, we reach out to somebody. And, and especially yeah, on know. LinkedIn. Yeah, I mean, we, we talk, we do talk a lot about quality versus quantity, and um, when whenever we we hear somebody say, OK, well, LinkedIn, how much time it's going to take? Like we're, we're quick to say, OK, time out. If this is a conversation of how quick can I get this done? We're probably not a good conversation for you. Like you're not going to like us and we're not going right. to like you. Quality over quantity. And, and what does that mean? And I love that she gave that example. And I honestly I kind of forgot that I did it. But the bottom of my about section says, if you want to chat, mention these three things and I, and you, you'll you get my attention. And I, I want to say twice and that I've heard. And one of them wasn't even trying to sell me something. They were just like, they were like, hey, I, I'm not trying to sell you something, but I they're saw They're spamming this. you. Yeah, they're spamming you about. Yeah. No, well, they wanted, they're like, I saw that on there and, and they wanted to chat about Manchester United football, okay. uh, you know, and that was really cool. But, you know, Quality means take your time and do the research. And what Sam really highlighted is it's a huge difference maker. It's a huge difference maker, whether it's whether it's a subject line in an email, which, you know, we don't talk a whole lot about email. There's plenty of people that talk about email. We don't need to. But it's it's a direct message in inside of LinkedIn. It's a comment that you reference. If you know just a little bit about them because you you read their whole about section, you scroll all the way down and you look at their hobbies, you look at where they volunteer, you find some way to connect. And don't do the easy stuff like, oh, you went to Arizona State. My dad went to Arizona. You know, go deeper than that. Like all that stuff is too superficial. That whole like, oh, we went to the same college. They only graduate like 10,000 people a year for the last 100 years. Like, oh, yeah, we're a small no. – it worked seven, eight, ten years ago, but it doesn't really work anymore because so many people are trying to see. You've got to go right. be human. Google search, look in their about, look at their interests, look at where they're volunteering, look at past jobs they had. You know, go ask the common connections. And I know it's hard. It's it's like hunting a bit. Go ask some of your common connections. How well do you know them? Could you introduce me to him? Oh, it takes too long. And most people don't really know them. They're just connected on LinkedIn. But what if, and I I like the way Sam said this, if you took your top 10 prospects, what's the value to you? And if you did the day of the research, you took, look, took an entire day just to do the research on all 10 of them. And you got a 20% 20 of them were willing to have a conversation with you. Is that full day of research worth it? Or do you just want more in marketing automation and complain that your emails didn't work? Well, and it also takes the whole, this is passive, right? This mm-hmm. is far from passive. It's yeah. it's just, it's a different type of aggressive versus volume, which most people think of, oh, I'm not, I'm being, it's being aggressive by doing the research and doing the homework and cutting through the noise. You know, the, it's what you just said, the noise zone I call the noise the, no, the noise zone, right, where there's just noise and you don't hear anything, has definitely gotten larger over the years. So yeah. you have to get yourself out of the noise zone and into something that actually causes somebody to 
react and do something. Mm -hmm. And so it is, it's not, it's far from passive because you have to do the work to even get to that point. You know, a big turning point for me around LinkedIn, and this is probably six, six years ago or so. And it was, um, the brutal truth of, uh, the brutal truth of sales. Gosh, I've been listening to him so long. I don't even know the, the proper name of it. The brutal, brutal truth of selling or brutal truth of sales. Um, he had somebody on as a guest who was a BDR, and I think she was a BDR for Adobe or one of the companies like that out of San Francisco. And she was young. She was a BDR, and he had her on. Like She grew up with his daughter or something. But um, she talked about how she got brought into her boss's office and sat down, and her boss had said, so uh, this, is the, this is all the emails that um, so-and-so sent out. And they, they sent out the most emails of anybody this month. And she said, okay. And then this is your list of emails that you sent out. And it was like significantly less. And she started to get nervous. And she goes, but this is your success list of, of meetings and opportunities. And this is their success list of meetings and opportunities. And they said, what are you doing differently? And all she was doing differently was, well, I spend as much time it is necessary to do the research to find something that I can use to connect with them about something personal about them or something I learn about them. So sometimes I research for an hour before I send it out. But what I found is if I can connect with them like a human being, that I have a much higher success rate. So I don't need to send as many out because the quality I send out mm-hmm. is is really doing the lift for me. And that's basically everything that Sam said today. Yeah. Take and the time to do the work. I think she I think epitomized what we've talked about is modern selling, you know, with some really good hacks along the way. So yeah. all right. Well, really, really good show. This is one I'm gonna definitely listen to a couple of times. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm out I'm out with a client and uh, I don't have my notes in front of me, but I'm sitting there like taking all these mental <laughs> notes. Um, it was great. And uh, for everybody listening, I, I get to be with the client today and we're, we're filming, we're interviewing a lot of their customers for social content and uh, we're interviewing people on their team for social content and shorts. And we take all this content too in the transcripts and we put it into their into their AIQ at Fist Bump. And it's, it's just been, it's been a great day. And, and the food's been really good too. So, you know, win-win. So are you at a booth or at a, just at a conference? No, 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 no. So this is our client, uh, Competitive Solutions, and um, they have a two, a three-day user conference. Oh, okay. They're rolling okay. out their new software, which is uh, Visuant 5.0. And uh, all their users are here, so we get to talk with them and hear about up until 5.0, like what is working and why did you use it? What differences it make? And then we're talking to them a little bit about uh, they're all early adopters to the 5.0. You know, they're like the the beta users of 5.0. So we're getting from some feedback from them about how it's working, what they like and all that. It's It's been, it's been fantastic. Well, I'll let you get back to it. Thank you for uh, jumping out and making it happen. No. And no, uh, thanks sorry, everybody. Sorry solo. I don't know if... Yeah. I don't know if you've ever done solo before. You know, we were going to make it work. We were going to make it work. So, did yeah, great job. All right. All, All right. right. Thanks, everybody. everybody. Well, Carson's not here. So, happy modern selling. And thanks so much for joining us. And sorry I was late. No problem. See you next week.